2022 graduation ceremony. You may have a seat. Wow, they made it. We made it all here. It's a windy, blistery day. It's good to see all your smiling faces. I'm happy that you're all here. I'm happy that we're here for these two awesome seniors. So what we're going to do next is we're going to, I'm going to invite you into praise and worship with us. This is our HCA Chapel Band. Yeah. And they get to lead us in a couple of songs, and then we'll continue on. Thank you. 
your faithfulness. Thank you for the firm foundation that you are in our lives. God, thank you for this wonderful day. In your name, Jesus, amen. You may be seated. I get the wonderful honor of introducing our guest speaker. Most of you probably know him already, Mr. Shabaka Williams. You know, yeah, he, I've known him since before my son was born, my oldest, which is a little upwards of 20 years. And the joke was that when I taught his Bible college class, I brought Peter with me. And so he and Peter just grew up in God together. He has been the principal for a while here. We sent him on in January of this year to his next season in God in another part of the country. And he graciously accepted the request of our seniors. When I asked him, hey, who do you want to be your commencement speaker? They're like, ah. And so I gave him a couple of suggestions and they were still like, uh, who are they? I said, how about Mr. Williams? Yes, very yes. So without any further ado, Mr. Williams, would you come and share with us? Good evening, everyone. I am so um, immensely honored to be here. And I just want to say um, thank you to all of the school administration, the leadership of this community and church, to all the faculty at HCA, and just everyone that's been um, a part of these two young ladies' lives over the years um, that has got them to this point. Um, thank you for sewing into their lives. And I understand that when you have a graduation or a commencement, although it's the senior's big day, right? It's your big day. Um, we're celebrating so much more than just these two individuals, but the, the work that so many people, the heart, the soul, uh, the wisdom that so many people have poured into them over the years. So I want to thank each and every one of you. And because it is a fun day, why don't you just go ahead and give yourself a round of applause? Thank you. Um, thank you, seniors, as well, for um, filling in my name in that ah uh, blank. Um, <laughs> I, again, I'm very much honored to be here. You know, I kind of, hold on here, I got to uh, respect the time. Y'all got a clock back there, okay. See, I forgot already. So I'm going to pay attention to that clock. It's 619, and they told me I have 15 to 20 minutes, which means I really have 20 minutes, okay. Uh, but I want to respect the time as we celebrate them um, this evening. You know, I struggled, ladies, um, so much when I thought about coming back and being able to speak to you. Um, I struggled on several points because I kind of started to reflect when I was a senior. And um, believe it or not, I was that young once. Um, but, you know, I grew up and here I am at 25. Um, I'm still telling that joke, yeah. Um, here I am, and I begin to think back to my commencement ceremony. And I know that we had balloons, and it was um, in an auditorium, not that much different than this one. And they, um, you know, had caps and gowns, and there was a speaker, and he said something, or she said something. I, I just struggled to recall what they actually said. And for whatever reason that bothered me, I kept thinking, what did Shirley, as I began this journey into a next and critical and probably the longest season of life, adulthood and freedom from high school. Come on, how many of y'all want to go back to high school? No, okay, see, we all are happy about this day. Um, I couldn't remember what the person had said as I was being launched into that season, and I kept thinking, surely that has to be an important uh, moment. That has that what, what said has to be some type of impetus for the next season. It, surely they said something that has helped me throughout the years, and for whatever reason, I could not remember. No one recorded it. They don't have a live stream. I can go back and search. We didn't have that technology way back then. Um, and so I was remiss. And I said, well, I, I bet they probably said something really witty and meaningful. 
So I need to come up with something witty and meaningful because that will stick in the seniors' minds. And as much as I thought girls, I couldn't think of anything funny. I, I, I hopefully will say something meaningful here, but I kept thinking and thinking, and the more that I thought, the less productive that was. So I, I, I quit my own ways, and I began to pray. All right, kudos for prayer. And I feel like the Lord gave me three scriptures to share with you. And so my charge to you all this evening will be simply to remember these scriptures. Okay? Unless you forget, I still have your emails. I'll email them to you. Right? All right? The first one everyone has, if you have a program, I think it's in the program, it was the, the students... Um, Theme verse, this class chose a meaningful verse, and it's in Proverbs 19, 20, and verse 21. Let me read this passage. It says, hear counsel. Actually, let me read it from near translation. I think it says, listen to advice and accept discipline so that you may be wise the rest of your days. Many plans are in a person's heart, but the advice of the Lord will stand. And when I read that verse and it was shared to me and said, this is the verse the seniors have as their theme this year. I thought, how fitting, how appropriate, how mature that at this time, in this day and age where we have a generation that's arising in the earth, that there is still some of that generation that would say, you know what, we want to receive counsel. We're willing to accept and hear the advice that will lead us to have discipline. Right, We want to be, watch what he said there, wise the rest of your days. You know, it took me till about maybe the age of uh, 19, 20. Um, I graduated at 18, uh, close, closer to 17, just like you all did. And um, I realized after a few years past high school that people who had been on the planet longer than I had had more experience than I had and probably had something worthwhile to say. So let me just encourage you with this point. If a person has been on the planet longer than you have and you can discern just even an inkling of wisdom in the counsel or advice or the life that they might share with you, capitalize on it, girls. Take it as your own. Because the Bible says that when you can receive it, and make some type of personal application that looks like discipline in your own life that you now have wisdom for the rest of your days. Has everyone ever heard that? Where people had said, you should be smart enough to learn from others' mistakes. This is true. And it will help you on your journey in life. This other verse came to me as I stopped and, and just began to reflect on your lives as individuals. And um, Taya, I remember when you were born. So I guess that kind of busts my 25-year-old lie bubble right there. Um, and then, Megan, I remember when you came. And the thing that has just been so poignant is that um, your father, we were actually at a graduation ceremony. And it was a wonderful time. We were celebrating the seniors. We were having, um, you know, a commencement. And at the end of the ceremony, Mr. Aldridge came to me. He says, this is why I'm moving my family here. You remember that, Dwayne? He says, this is what I want for them. This presence of God, this impartation of truth, this awareness of the spirit, and not even just an awareness, but him coming and resting upon their lives. This is what I want for my children. And so to have seen you, Megan, over these last years, to have access to that and to touch it in different seasons, to walk in it, to grow and mature, Taya, to see you have grown up. You know, I looked at your board out there and you have grown. This verse came to me. So this is the second verse I would share with you. Luke 2 and 52, the Bible says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. In layman's terms, he grew up, and he grew up good. And ladies, I would say to you, it has been an extreme pleasure and joy, not just mine, but of many, to watch you both grow up and to grow up good. 
to see you mature, as this verse said, in wisdom and stature. And to have favor, not just with God, but also with men. To have favor among your peers, to have favor in your workplace with your co-workers, to have favor amongst the fellowship of the saints within the church, to have favor in your families and with your siblings. It's been a great honor to see you grow and mature. Here's a crux that I want to offer to you, right? That you're not done growing and maturing. All right, some people graduate and think, I have arrived, can't nobody tell me nothing. No, no, go back to the other verse. Willing to accept and receive advice, instruction, discipline, the sharing of life that others will bring to you. Still receive that. Here's the key to this verse of growing and stature and favor and wisdom with God and man. It's in the passage just a few verses ahead of this one. You can read it later at your own leisure. It's where Jesus at age 12 had to be about his father's business. But he was not necessarily about his mother's business. See, Mama Mary expected him to be in the caravan on the way back home. But Jesus, at 12 years old, stayed behind in Jerusalem. And he was in the temple, hanging out at church. Well, that's not a bad thing. We can't fault Jesus for that. The issue was his parents did not know. So they became frantic with worry and fear and they thought he was with this cousin or that relative and he wasn't. And they had to make a turnaround trek three days, the Bible says, to go back to Jerusalem to find this child. Ladies, this is just a little piece of advice. This one's for free. Don't do nothing that calls your parents to have to look for you for three days. And when they found him, the Bible says that Mary and Joseph talked to him and here's the key. And Jesus submitted himself to them. I want to encourage you that as you receive this diploma, as you receive the blessing and the prayers that will be prayed over you, as you receive the, the rite of passage, so to speak, into this next season of adulthood and life, of independence, of making your own decisions in many ways for the first time, make the decision to submit. To submit to the right people at the right place and at the right time. And I can't speak for every single senior that has graduated in the world this year, but I will say of certain for the both of you that God has blessed you richly with parents that love you and that have your best interests at heart. And so you don't have to go very far for love and for good advice and for a safe place to practice submission. They're still right here. I know both of your fathers, I was thinking this as I drove up from St. Louis, I know both of your fathers and, and how um, sincerely and seriously that they have given their hearts to the Lord. And for that reason, you both can trust your hearts in their hands. So continue to grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And then the last verse that I want to share is in Psalms 32, 8 and 9. That's last passage. Everyone is in Psalms 32, 8 and 9. Before I read that, let me make reference again to the senior's theme verse, that passage in Proverbs where it says, talks about hearing um, advice and, and accepting discipline. The second verse that they put there said, many plans are in a person's heart, but the advice of the Lord will stand. And when I was reading and meditating on that this week, I kept listening to that and going over that verse. And I just felt like the Lord reminded me that that second verse there, of Proverbs, Proverbs 19 and 21. And I want to challenge you ladies with this to truly make that a life prayer. Lord, that I might have many plans in my heart. I might have any, many ideas for my life. I might have many goals and many paths. I used to tell people for years, they said, what do you, what do you uh, want to do when you grow up? You know, and I said, I'm still trying to figure that out. 
Okay, many plans may be in your heart, but it is the advice or the plans or the counsel of the Lord that will stand and prevail. Make that your prayer, girls, every single day if you can. God, I know I have plans, I have ambitions, I have dreams, but I'm submitting those to you. I'm doing practically, day by day, as I walk out this life before you, what we sang this evening, that I will build my life around you and with your guidance. As I hit that vein of meditation, this psalm came back to me, Psalms 32, 8 and 9. Listen carefully. This I share with you because it's a promise over your life. He says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you will go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be as the horse, like a wild stallion, or I guess in this case, a crazy mare. Okay. Um, I will uh, guide you with my eye. Be not as the horse or as the mule, which has no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near to you. See, God's desire, ladies, and in fact, everyone in this room, is that as his children, we would follow his voice. He doesn't want to bridle us. He's not out to tame our wild passions. He's saying, walk with me as a father and listen to my voice because I will instruct you in the way that you will go. I'll give you peace when you maybe are anxious about something in life. I'll shed light on the path, perhaps when it's too dark for you to actually see which way you should go. I'll give you a little nudge when you need that encouragement and push to take a step forward and I'll be there to catch you every single time if or when you fall. See, the promise here is a promise of his presence. And I'll tell you, in the last six months, I've met so many people, it breaks my heart, who are oblivious to the fact that heaven is open and that the Father desperately wants to instruct them and teach them in the way that they should go. So, Ladies, I challenge you tonight, I encourage you to um, open up that email tomorrow morning, seriously, and look over those verses. Make them your own. They're not just mine. They're not just your parents. They aren't your teachers. No one has any stock on those any more than you do have access to them. And know that God has great things in store for you. And I'll just be very honest with you. This adult world, you know, a lot of seniors are so happy. Oh, freedom. Yeah, you're free to start paying your own bills. Come on, pick up the cost of the insurance on that car you want to drive around in. Freedom to pay for the gas that you burn up, right? Freedom to buy your own clothes, all right? And they still better be appropriate. (laughs) All right, my time is winding down, guys. But with this freedom, with these privileges, comes great responsibility. And here's, you know, I've heard that so often, and I think a lot of times young people just feel this burden of, oh, responsibility. You know what? I've learned in life that when the weight of it is too heavy, our good, good father is there, and he gives us grace that we don't have to shoulder it alone. So... I say congratulations to you, the HCA class of 2022. Y'all are rocking it already. I told Taya today, y'all went to Florida on a senior trip. Come on, everybody in this room is jealous. Congratulations, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. That was excellent. I get the privilege also to introduce our senior class speaker, and I'm really excited because in the last three months, she's found her voice, and she's speaking more into others' lives. And I'm excited for you all to hear what she has to say, Miss Megan Osborne. Would you please come?
Hi. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, good evening, parents, family, friends, teachers, mentors, and of course, my fellow graduate. Um, disclaimer before I start, I was just going to wing it because the more I thought about writing a speech, the more nervous I got. But then I'm like, no. So I wrote a speech like 15 minutes before I had lunch today. So <laughs> bear with me. <laughs> All right. Um, today we have become graduates, and tonight we celebrate our triumph our achievements and our victories, both individually and together. And the journey which we have started on the road towards our future destinations. Each of us has had our own unique experiences here, a combination of good times and bad times, times of laughter and of joy, times of school spirit and of course, times of last minute studying for that exam we forgot was on Monday. We've had so many fun memories between going on volleyball trips or getting a crab stuck in my hair on my senior trip. <laughs> but throughout the good times and the bad times, the gaining and losing of classmates, we have pursued the goal of being the best people we can be in God, which is something the values H the values oh which is something the values of HCA have instilled in us. Graduation marks the end of yet another extraordinary chapter in our lives. With this chapter closed, I am certain that we are already anxious about starting the next one because, unlike an English book, we cannot skip through the pages to see how long the next chapter is going to be or skim through the table of contents to see what it'll hold. Luckily, as HCA graduates, we have been given all of the tools we need to live out our stories. And with the love and support of our family, friends, and God, our stories have the potential to become bestsellers. During our time at HCA, we have made many lasting friendships, lived through lifelong memories, and learned many important lessons. So, as we begin exploring our next chapter, let us each remember to trust God and that it's okay to lean on others and help us get through life. Because, as 1 Corinthians 12, 20-26 says, added, As it is, there are many parts of one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think are less honorable, we bestow the greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that it lacked, that there may be no division in the body, that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Thank you. Hi, my name is Megan Osborne. I'm basically from here. I've been going to school here for the past seven years. It'll officially be seven years in August, but I've pretty much always lived in Missouri my entire life. Hi, my name is Taya Rahanik. I'm from Heartland my whole life. I've gone to school here my whole life. 17 years. The main thing I've learned this year is like how to be more open with people, which is kind of, I feel like, a long time coming. <laughs> um, something I've learned is I've learned how to be more mature and independent as an adult. And I've learned how to put everything I do through uh, Christ and filter everything through that. I'm definitely grateful for my parents coming to Heartland. It was definitely a big adjustment at first, my little seventh grade self, <laughs> but I definitely appreciate it now. I can see how it has impacted my life in a good way, and knowing how my parents grew up, it's kind of scary to think, like, if I hadn't have come here, what would my life be right now? And I'm also very grateful for a lot of the youth leaders in my life. Um, they offer a lot of encouragement and stuff. Um, I definitely want to say thank you to my parents and all my family members and all the teachers that have put up with my class throughout the years and all my friends. I feel like it's hard.
hard to choose just one favorite memory. There's so many good ones from like volleyball trips to back when we had a bigger class. <laughs> um, it's always very enjoyable whenever we first combined with the 11th graders. It was just an interesting dynamic, differences in maturity. <laughs> um, my favorite memory is one time on a Joplin volleyball trip, we were all walking out to the car and I got in the car and then Mr. Ballard locked the door and made the girls dance to be able to get in the car. <laughs> and then later at the gas station on our way home, we locked him out of the car <laughs> and made him dance to get in the car. <laughs> Um, right now I'm praying and contemplating about going to Bible college. Um, not quite sure yet, but we're gonna see. And I've been wanting to become a physical therapist for a while now, but we'll see what God calls me into. From here I plan to take the two-year Bible college course here at Heartland. And then I'll wait and see what God has for me. That was a great video, James. Good job. You had great content to work with. Now we're going to do our presentation of roses. And this is where the graduates take some time and honor those who have meant so much to them in their lives. So graduates, would you please come? Good evening. It's my privilege to be able to introduce and to open up our time of being able to pray for the graduates. So ladies, if you want to come up here in the front. Before we do this, um, I just want to express from my heart uh, how proud we are of you both. Uh, the thought of being able to stand in a graduation ceremony and hear Megan Osborne give a speech is, <laughs> is very incredible. <laughs> That's such a good thing. And I know that both of them are, for those of you who are guests, both of them are very actively involved in, in their workplaces here in the community. And they've just really stepped into their own this year. And it's so exciting, so exciting to see. And I'm, I'm very um, looking forward to everything that God has for the both of you. Because I know there's a lot. This has been a, you guys are a great class, and we're very proud of you. If I could ask the parents and the faculty and staff of HCA and the other leaders that are here to just gather around these wonderful ladies, and we're going to allow you a time to pray for them, and then I'm going to close this time when we're done with that. So.
you'd feel comfortable, if you'd just raise your, lift up your hands, and we're going to just pray for these young ladies. Lord, we just come before you with grateful hearts. Lord, most importantly, for the life that you put inside of them. Lord, the relationship that they are developing with you. God, for the your hand upon their life. And God, it's been very evident, and we are so grateful for that. We thank you for parents and grandparents and friends and youth group leaders and teachers and principals and all those that have come alongside of them and imparted life into them. And Lord, we just pray, God, for the season that lies ahead, that you'd guide, that you'd lead them, that their heart would be open, that their ears would be open to hear your voice, to know the steps along the way. God, help them to know that they don't have to have it all figured out. All they need to do is follow you. Just take one step in front of the other and move forward ever listening to your voice. God, we pray that you would bless them. You would guide them. You would lead them. Lord, you would help them to fulfill every promise that you've made, every uh, call that you've put upon their life, every uh, circumstance, every situation, everything that you would have them to do. God, pour out your grace and your strength and your mercy to help them through that. And so God, we, one more time, we thank you for their lives. We thank you for the work that you're doing in them. And we thank you, God, for their faith in you. And we pray these things in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, ladies. <laughs> We're going to move into the presentation of our diplomas. I know that's what you're looking forward to, and I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Dombrowski. All right. Megan Kylie Grace Osborne. Taya Nicole Rahanek. graduates, you may move your tassels. It's my honor to present to you Heartland Christian Academy's graduating class of 2022. Line out there and tell the graduates congratulations and we have cupcakes and cookies as well. 